The CPI is being released this week, Thursday, January 12th at 8.30 a.m. And I want to see if we can predict ahead of time based off the history that we have and recent context on that number that we're going to come out with, with the headline number for year over year, also the core CPI number year over year, and also the month over month values that we'll have. So we'll see what history can tell us from the data. And we'll also see with the recent context that we have regarding the current macroeconomics, where we can count on those measures coming in. So with that said, I'm Dr. Stock, doctor of education, and I'm glad you're with me. Let's get right to it. Here I have the calendar from BLS for you for the CPI releases, and you can see December's releases, January 12th, 2023 at 8.30 a.m. And again, that's Eastern Standard Time. When we look at the CPI summary from November, you can see that we have a 0.1% increase month over month in inflation and also a 7.1% year over year inflation number for November. And I crunched a lot of numbers for this, and I think that the data will speak for itself and we'll get there very soon. Something that's worth mentioning is that food and energy, when we look at energy starting back at March, we climbed all the way up until June, and after that peak, we've leveled off since then. It actually entered a slight downtrend that we have in energy prices. I think that those are going to be remain a lot unchanged uh, going into December, that we're going to be near this value. Uh, unfortunately, December 2021 is all the way down here. So November to December, we're not going to see a big jump in there. I think that it was around a 13% year-over-year increase in energy prices from November 2021 to November 2022. And I expect it to, uh, to come in once again around 13% for December. We'll see what how that comes out. When we look at food, also known to, uh, to be volatile, which is uh, why it's not part of the core CPI, you can see from November 2021 to December, we don't have a large change there. However, over time, it was quite a big change. But we have uh, entered this slight rounding that we have. This is called concavity and it's concave down right now. So sort of rounding this way, if you will, sort of like a, a mountain peak. And we might not be at the peak, but we are starting to level off where we see less of an increase each month. However, that approximate 10% number that we had for food for November 2021 to November 2022, it's probably still going to be around 10% for December. So I don't think that's going to have a large impact. Let's move over to the data itself. So what we're looking at here is the one, per, one month percent change. So this is month over month from 1947 to 2022. And if you look at the data that I have, you can see that December, 80% of the time has a month over month value greater than zero. So what that can tell us is that we should be on the positive side of things as it goes. However, macroeconomically and the fact that the Fed is uh, going through financial tightening cycle right now, we could be near zero for this moving forward. And if I plot out all of the month over month measures that we have over that time, the most frequently occurring, which I've highlighted anything that was 5% uh, or greater of occurrence, anything from negative 0.1% month over month all the way up to 0.6% month over month are the most commonly occurring. And you can see the majority in here. So what would that be? That'd be 31, 40, almost 50% of the time. 50, uh, it's about 47% of the time. So close to 50% of the time, we get a, a measure of 0.1, 2, or 3. And I think that because of the, the current slowing down that we have going on and the idea that we're possibly going through uh, a recession right now, I think that we'll be at the lower end of this. So I would be very surprised to see it above 0.1 month over month. And uh, so 0.2, I think, would be the absolute maximum that we would see. And you know, I think, you know, seeing 0% would be incredible for us. Uh, seeing negative 0.1%, I think in the short term would be very good. However, that's not a pattern that we want to continue. I think the Fed would, for the economy, I think would suffer. And I think the Fed would certainly not want to see that happening because then we could enter a period of deflation, which could have large economic impacts, especially on things like jobs. So what I did was I took those month over month and I turned it into uh, the index numbers that we have for November, so what we know, and then I translated it to estimates for December, according to what month over month we would have, given that the most common month over month uh, readings that we have are negative 0.1% all the way up to positive 0.6% month over month. And just look at these numbers. So if we came in, I actually wanna start at the bottom of this, so I'll scroll a little bit for you. If we came in at 0.6%, we would have an even 7.1% 
increase in inflation year over year. I think that's a bit too hot for that. And if we go to the more common ones, that would be these three, the 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0.3%, we can get CPI readings of 6.6 .6 all the way up to 6.8% year over year as a headline number. That's including food and energy. We'll get to excluding food and energy with the core CPI soon. I actually wouldn't be surprised. I'm actually going to put my money here at the 6.5% to 6.6% .6 year over year readings that we will have coming into this next month, into December on January the 12th, 8.30 a.m. when we see those numbers come out. If I see 6.5 to 6.6, .6, that's exactly what I expect. If it comes in hot, 6.7 to 6.8 would be the greatest two numbers for headlines that I would expect from that. And if we come in at 6.4, I think that's a pleasant surprise to the markets. And I think that that would uh, possibly accelerate that Fed pause um, and maybe even be a sooner U-turn, even though they'll never say it, at least not at this point, not, or not this early in the game, because they see inflation going in the right direction, trying to land us at about that 2% annualized inflation, which mind you, 0.2% month over month is a 2.4% annualized rate of inflation, which is just above their target of two. So if we continue to see 0.1%, 0.2% inflation month over month, that puts us right around where they want to be. So the more often we see that, the stronger case it is for the Fed to, to uh, pause their rate hiking, stop their quantitative tightening cycle, and possibly accelerating that uh, quantitative easing cycle. Now, if we go less food and energy, for this one, this was 6% year over year for November 2022, and that we actually have for you here. Whoa, too far. Sorry, I get excited sometimes. Right, here's our core CPI of 6% year over year. And again, this is core CPI, so less food and energy. And there you can see that energy uh, was 13.1% according to the energy index. And then there's the, the food increase of 10% uh, that, I was, that I mentioned earlier in the video. Back to the data, the average month over month for core that we have is 0.3%. The median is also 0.3%. Median is important because it is not sensitive to outliers um, because this is the, the, if you arrange all the month over month, in numerical order from least to greatest and find the middle position, that's your median of 0.3%, the standard deviation 0.2. And the most common month over month measures that we have is zero month over month, so even. And you can see to go negative, combined, negative doesn't even make 2% of the time for a core CPI that we actually have a negative month over month. So if we go negative in the core CPI, that could be really good for markets. It's just something we don't want to sustain over time. Uh, like I said, it could be bad for the economy. It, uh, it could show that we're shrinking economically. We could have reduced GDP. We could have reduced jobs from numbers of layoffs. And that's something that we don't want to see people suffer through. So might be good in the short term, not something we want to see sustained. Uh, again, we want to land around that 2% inflation target. Now, when we look at these, 0.2 and 0.3% come in at almost half the time. So between the two of them, that's over 47% of the time for core CPI, the month over month reading to be between 0.2 and 0.3%. And what I've done again is highlighted anything that happened at least 5% of the time. So we have zero to 0.6. So almost that same range that we had when we looked at uh, the all items version of the CPI. So if I had to put my money on any of this, I would say 0.1 to 0.3%. And again, Given the current situation where things are slowing down for us, I think it'd be that lower half, 0.1, uh, 0.1 to 0.2. 0.1 doesn't happen very often, but I think that we're in a uh, quantitative tightening cycle that is actually going to probably land us at the lower end of this. I have that feeling that 0.1 is going to be there. Feeling's not enough to go on. 0.1 or 0.2 is where I'd put my money. If I had to pick just one of them, statistically, it's 0.2 given the quantitative tightening cycle that we're in, like I said, that actually makes a little bit more of an extreme case. So even though 0.1 doesn't happen as often, uh, I think it's a really good likelihood uh, that we'll see uh, 0.1 happen. And that doesn't rule out being even. Uh, now to go with a negative 0.1, you can see that happens 0.5% of the time. So that, that's a one out of 200 case. And I don't think that we're going to drop that low. So zero would be incredible. Uh, point 0.1 I think is about right. And point 0.2 is a good possibility. 3.3 3 I think is high. And I think that would be surprising. Now I have the table for this one all the way at the end. So I did the same thing for core CPI that I did for uh, all items for CPI. And when we look at that, 
if we go 0%, I, I didn't highlight the negative 0.1% um, month over month to calculate the year over year that we would have. So I think 5.4 is out of the question. Or, I'm sorry, 5.3 is out of the question. 5.4, I think it would be the, the low estimate that I would have for this. I think 5.5 is going to be right for that headline number for core CPI. So that would be if we get a 0.1% month over month inflation uh, for core CPI. And I think that will be capped at 5.6. So uh, from some of the estimates that I saw coming in at about 5.7, I think that's high. I think that that would be a person being conservative. And while I'm good with being conservative, uh, statistically, um, given the information that I have, I'd, I'm biased towards the downside on this one, that we would be at the lower end of the month over month readings. So putting these two together, what I have here is the month over month leading to the index measure and then what it means year over year for the estimates for December 2022. And so when we look at all items, you can see the index measure, my apologies, for negative 0.1% all the way up to 6%. And as I've mentioned before, I think that we'll be at this lower end, the 6.5, 6 6.6 to 6.7. And I think coming in at 6.5 to 6.6 .6 is something that is a possibility given those still relatively high food and energy prices that we have, even though they weren't where they were back in uh, June for energy, for example. And the fact that we have that, that flattening out of the food prices, you know, 0.1, I think would be really good um, given the other items that are included in the CPI. Uh, food and energy could keep us up at that point too. So 6.5 to 6.7. I'm going to sit in the middle at, uh, I think 6.6% is my final answer for a year over year, which would mean 0.1% month over month for all items. And then when we look at less food and energy, 0.1%, uh, I'm going with it. So 0.1% month over month for the core CPI, 5.5% uh, annualized. I'm sorry, 5.5% year over year for December uh, is the estimate. So I think that we're going to get very positive readings from the CPI this month on Thursday, January the 12th. Uh, I think the market will absolutely love it. And what I'm curious about is Monday through Wednesday, if we see some of big red days there, that could be very, very positive for Thursday coming around and giving us a, a very nice green day based off of positive CPI news. If the CPI comes in hotter, so if we see 0.3% uh, for year over year for all items for that headline number CPI. That's something that even though it would not be detrimental, I still think it's a positive thing. It puts us above the 2% inflation target range. And then also for food, uh, I'm sorry, for core CPI, the 0.2 to 0.3% would be okay. Anything above 0.3% on either one, I don't think is good news for us. That shows that we're moving in the wrong direction with inflation, which could possibly continue that Fed tightening cycle. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you found this informative. Uh, I will provide as much education as I can based off the stuff that I'm learning for myself about these different measures that we have for the economy for, and how, to, how does that impact the stock market. Let me know down in the comments if you found this helpful. I would absolutely love to hear from you. If you're part of the few thousand who watched me before, give me a nice welcome back. Um, I'm sorry for disappearing. I was finishing up my doctorate and now it's finished. So the doctor part of Dr. Stock is now an official title. And, uh, and I couldn't be happier not only to, uh, to have that finished, but also to move forward and really lean into that adventure that is life. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.